Go ahead. Well, hi, everybody. I am here in a beautiful library to tell you all I know about Dr. Seuss. And as you can see, I came in here with my mask on because we need to be wearing our mask. And I hope you all have your mask on, depending where you're at. And I'm going to be taking my mask off because I'm the only one here among all of these. So I'm gonna take my mask off and I feel very safe. You should be feeling very safe. And we're gonna start. Dr. Seuss, I think everybody knows a little bit about Dr. Seuss. And as you can see, I have a lot of things up here that have his name on just about everything because he was a very important person that did something. Yes, he wrote all of these books. So let's see, what do we call that when you see somebody's name on a book? The author, exactly, the author. And there's something else. If the author wrote the book, put all the words into it, you need a lot of neat pictures. And if you put the pictures in your book, or any book, you're called the illustrator. And so he's the author illustrator of just about every book up here. So Dr. Seuss is not alive anymore. He died quite a while ago. If he were alive, he'd be well over 100 years old. And when he was writing, he started when he was 30, in his 30s. He wrote for adult people, grown-ups, and then everybody said the way he did things that he needed to make books for kids because kids needed fun books to read. And so Dr. Seuss started out. And I don't know if you can tell which book up here, what is his first book? It's one that looks very, very old. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. To think I saw it on Mulberry Street. Mulberry Street, he wrote in 1937. It was his oldest first book that he wrote for boys and girls. And this looks like a very old copy, which it is. And it looks kind of faded and kind of worn and used up. But because it's the first one he wrote and it is an original one, I never want to get rid of it. But just in case somebody doesn't want to use this one, I've got a brand new copy. And you can get, even though it's an old book, you can get brand new copies of those old books. And so this is the same story, it just looks brand new. It's a brand new cover. So that was the first book he wrote for boys and girls, and people liked it, but moms and dads had to read this story to the kids, and they wanted something that the kids could learn to read with. And so that was another challenge, because he said, I don't know anything about kids. He didn't have kids. But he said, I'll see what I can do. He, he liked to rhyme, and he thought, well, between he and his wife, he thought he could write a book about a cat, and she said, well, maybe you could put the cat in a hat, and guess what came? Of course, the cat in the hat. And the cat in the hat was an all together different size book. It was one that a boy or girl could use in their hands, and you could read it, and you could learn to read because he had words in it that they could sound out, they could figure it out. And of course, what did they do? They all rhyme. So if you got in a pinch, you could try to come up with a word that would rhyme with the one that you had before. So the cat in the hat became an instant success. And I can see by these two, there's a shimmery copy and it says it's 50 years old. So when cat in the hat book became 50 years old, they made a special book. And this is the special one. See how glitzy it is? And then the other one is not nearly like that. So it's the same story, same book, and that's the first one. That was wonderful, but guess what? People still said, Dr. Seuss, that's a great story, the kids love it, but there are a lot of words in there. Do you think you could write one that doesn't have that many words? And he thought about it, and he said, how can I do that? And they said, well, just if you could make something with just 50 words, not so many, like 200 words is a lot of words for kids. So he thought about it, and let's see, he came up with a book that only had 50 words in it, and I know it's up here somewhere. <gasps> yeah, it's a bright orange one, and I bet you all knew it right away. Green Eggs and Ham. That's one of the ones that everybody loves and everybody knows, and they still love Green Eggs and Ham. And we have some grandkids that love Green Eggs and Ham. 
I don't care about the green eggs part, but they sure love adding that food coloring to them. So that's green eggs and ham. It only had 50 words, and there was only one word in there that had eight letters in it. And I don't know if you could figure out what it is. Hmm. I don't want it here, and I don't want it there, and I won't do it anywhere. And that was the longest word in the book, so it was a pretty good book for them to start learning to read. So from then on, he had all kinds of books, all kinds of sizes of books, and people loved them because they were fun to read. Now, he didn't always write under Dr. Seuss's name. Sometimes he wrote under Viola Sieg's name. He changed his name because this book uh, had a different illustrator. I bet you can tell by the pictures, these aren't Dr. Seuss's characters. And this was done by Roy McKee. So Theo Lassig was his other name, his other uh, writing name. And Theo Lassig came from his real name. Did you think Dr. Seuss was his real name? He wasn't even a doctor but he always was supposed to be a doctor. His mom and dad thought it would be good if he was a doctor. But since he wasn't, he decided when he picked out his writing name, his pen name, he would become doctor. Seuss was his mom's maiden name, so that became his Dr. Seuss name. Theo was his real first name, Theodore. Seuss was his middle name, Lasig. That wasn't his name. I wonder why he had Lassig. Let's see, his last name was Geisel or Gessel or Giesel. Hmm, if we spell this backwards, G-E-I-S-E-L, that's his real last name. So this was his pen name when he wasn't the illustrator and he used that on a few books. So when you see Theo Lassig, it is a Dr. Seuss book, but it doesn't have the pictures if it says it's by another illustrator. These books are part of the book company that started after Dr. Seuss started writing books. He and his wife had huge book companies, and one of them was the Bright and Early for beginning books, and they almost always had a cat in a hat on it, up in the corner, on the outside, or on the back, and they always gave you a hint that that was a Dr. Seuss company book, not always that he wrote it. I know you know the Berenstein Bear books. The Berensteins that wrote also had Dr. Seuss's cat in the hat on them because sometimes they wrote for his company. So you can't always go by just seeing, oh, that's a Dr. Seuss book, I see the cat in the hat on it. So you always have to look to see who the author and the illustrator is to know what you have. Um, Dr. Seuss became so popular, they made all kinds of Dr. Seuss things. We have cat in the hats everywhere, we have thing one and three, thing two socks. We have cat in the hat cereal. When the cat in the hat movie came out, they made cereal to advertise it. And all kinds of things that you could have to remember Dr. Seuss in any way. Dr. Seuss became a very famous person. We even have band-aids with cat in the hat on it. And you know what? After all of that, and you see the cat in the hat, and you see all of that, and who came to see us today? The cat in the hat. But you know what? When people vote, and you ask them, what's your favorite book? How many of you would vote for the cat in the hat? And you expect everybody to raise their hand because the cat in the hat is the one that everyone remembers. And then you say, how many of you would vote for green eggs and ham? And guess what? Just about every time, everybody votes for green eggs and ham. So even though all of these things up here remind you of the cat and the hat, green eggs and ham has always been the most popular book that Dr. Seuss started with. But did Sam I Am come here today? Who came to see you today? Do I look like Sam I am? The cat in the hat, I think, is here to stay. What do you think? So I brought a book, and Dr. Seuss didn't put this book together because this was 
done long after he had passed away. But his books are in here, and this doesn't look like it could have all these books in it, but they put parts of some of the books that he wrote in here. There are seven books inside this book, and I'll be sharing some stories from them. And then you'll have to find the rest of the story. And where would you go to find that? Well, it'll be in some of these books, and you know where you can find them. So let's find out about Dr. Seuss Pops Up. Guess who we're gonna start with? Of course, the cat in the hat. The sun did not shine, it was too wet to play. So he sat in that house on that cold, cold, wet day. And then something went bump. How that bump made us jump. We looked, then we saw him step in on the mat. We looked and we saw him. That cat in the hat. I know it is wet and the sun is not sunny, but we can have lots of good fun that is funny. Look at me, look at me, look at me now. It's fun to have fun, but you have to know how. Not a very smart idea, is it? And I think you all know what probably happened after he bounced around. Yeah, disaster. But guess what? To see the rest of the story, you'll have to go to the Cat in the Hat book. And I know a lot of you know where to get them, at your library or school or on your bookshelf at home. How about this one? I am Sam. Do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. You do not like them? So you say, try them, try them, and you may. Try them, and you may. I say, Sam, if you will let me be, I will try them. You will see. Say, I like green eggs and ham. I do, I like them, Sam, I am. Is that the end of the story? No, we know that's not the end. But you know where to find that book. This one you should know. Fox and Socks. <coughs> Fox and Socks. Knox and Box. And here's a new trick, Mr. Knox. Socks on chicks and chicks on fox. Fox on clocks and bricks and blocks. Bricks and blocks on Knox on box. Now wait a minute. When a fox is in the bottle where the Tweedle Beetles battle with their paddles in a puddle on a noodle eating poodle, this is what they call a Tweedle Beetle Noodle Poodle Poodle Puddle Muddle Puddle Ruddle Fox and Socks, sir. Mr. Socks Fox. This one comes from a big book. This is The Sneetches, and it is here. And it has a few stories in it that Dr. Seuss wrote. One of them is, what was I scared of? And it became so popular, and I think kids probably read it when they went to bed. And when they'd fall asleep, this book would fall on their head. So they made it in this little size that little hands could hold, and it was a little easier to drop when they fell asleep. So what was I scared of was part of the Sneetches book, but the Sneetches book starts with this story about the Sneetches, one of my favorite stories. Now the star belly Sneetches had bellies with stars. The plain belly Sneetches had none upon theirs. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. Then quickly Sylvester McMonkey McMean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like a star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for $10 each. All the rest of that day on those well screaming beasters, the fix it up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. Off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machines they raced round and about again. And then when every last cent of their money was spent, 
that fix it up chappy fixed up and he went <laughs> they'll never learn you can't teach a snitch but McBean was quite wrong I'm quite happy to say the snitches got really quite smart on that day that day they decided that snitches are snitches and no kind of snitch is the best on the beaches and that one you know you can find in this big book this one everybody can read together I can read in red I can read in blue I can read in green pickle color too I can read in a bed and purple and in brown I can read in a circle and up side down there are so many things you can learn about but you'll miss the best things if you keep your eyes shut and that's what he said I can read with my eyes shut but you shouldn't do that if you read with your eyes shut you'll likely to find that the place where you're going is far far behind so keep your eyes open when you read one fish two fish red fish blue fish Everybody loves that one. Black fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish. This one has a little star. This one has a little car. My, what a lot of fish there are. Bump, bump, bump. Did you ever ride a wump? We have a wump with just one hump. But we know a man called Mr. Gump. Mr. Gump has a seven hump wump. So, if you like to go bump, bump, just, just, just jump on the hump of the wump of bump. Are there really seven humps? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There they are. Don't think I've ever seen one. And, of course, when the cat in the hat came on that rainy day, you knew something was going to happen when it snowed. The cat and the hat comes back. We had a lot of snow this year. He would have had fun coming back this year. This was no time for play. This was no time for fun. The snow is so heavy. It's just like the snow I had to shovel yesterday in my garage lot. This was no time for games. There was work to be done. All that deep, deep, deep snow, all that snow had to go. Well, there we were. We were working like that when who should come up but that cat in the hat. Then that cat went right in. He was up to no good. So I ran in after him as fast as I could. And then I got mad. This was no time for fun. I said, cat, you get out. There's work to be done. It is good I have someone to help me, he said right here in the hat on the top of my head. It is good that I have him with me today. He helps me a lot. This is little cat A. And I think you know, you go through a whole alphabet until we come to, now we have little cat Z. You can't see, said the cat, but I bet you can't guess what he has in his hat. He has something called Voom. Voom is so hard to get. You never saw anything like it, I bet. Then that voom, it went voom, and oh, what a voom. Now don't ask me what voom is. I never will know, but boy, let me tell you, it does clean up snow. So that is a book with seven of Dr. Seuss's books. And I know you've seen them before, and I know a lot of you can get them at the library or in your schools or even at home. So enjoy Dr. Seuss and all of his books. Now I am done, and when people are done and they get ready to go, and I'm not gonna be alone anymore, so I need to put my mask back on, and I feel like I'm safe and ready to go out to greet other people. You have a really good day and enjoy Dr. Seuss.